And uh, we're going to go do that. And then we're going to hit the road and drive straight back because we're lunatics. And uh, speaking of lunatics, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the queen of lunatics herself, Roseanne, looking particularly bagged out. Um, I don't know what that is in the background. I can't tell if that's a Playboy bunny in a, in a, in a ski suit or a tauntaun. Um, uh, there's a Hard Day's Night poster. She's got blankets on the sofa, which any uh, cat owner knows is a necessity at times. Um, but I had to, we had to grab this one. Just to, I have to check out the beginning of this. I don't think we'll watch the whole thing because we don't have time. Read the title of this. Just, 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 just enjoy the title of this for a fucking second. And, and just like the sledgehammer of irony that just, you could see it coming in slow motion uh, down on us all as this clip is on the fucking internet forever. How women ruined comedy. That's right. That's the, that's the fucking title of this. Yeah, I, I don't know. Now. Obviously, she thinks she's winning at podcasts, so I, I, honest to God, honest to fucking, what? Also, I would like to say for the record, um, Madeline Kahn, uh, our dear friend Sarah Silverman, who's very angry with me, and rightly so, uh, and, and yet isn't, um, the, like, Gilda Radner, uh, Lorraine Newman, the, like, Lily Tomlin, it is a myriad of, of women both who performed as stand-ups and, as part of, uh, like, troops, and who are, I mean, just goddamn, there's so many fucking super funny women in the world, period, end of story, that it just aggravates, like, just watch how funny Jane Fonda and Dolly Parton are in 9 to 5, and they're not the comedians, one's a singer, the other's a straight actor, and they're in it with Lily Tomlin, who is a fucking brilliant comedian, and the three of them together are equal equally funny at times like they all have their hit moment where it's just like god damn you pulled that off like the timing the subtlety of a certain joke the delivery of it like from on the nerdy comedian side of things just the delivery and the power i just love them and to so for some ass hat to say all right anyways that let's find out what she means by that shall we i don't even fucking know Oh, great. Now it doesn't want to play because that's how shit works. So that, okay. Here we go. Housewife, then they, they let straight women in then. <laughs> <laughs> but we made the horrible mistake, the straight women, the mothers, we made the horrible mistake and let uh, more than two lesbians in and they took over. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're they like they rabbits. Do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, they take over and push you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, then we were, we kind of had every. I, I think, I hope she's uh, being kind of ironic and sarcastic because I. I, um, I don't know if Kim Congdon is a lesbian and that's the point, or if they're just, whatever. But they drove everybody out with so their, they were... with their, uh, you know, what do they used to, that's where it all started. The, uh, politically correct horse shit. That's why I'm a comic. Mm -hmm. I was always against that. That's honestly... They told me, you can't tell your jokes. Can you say the word lover instead of husband? Yeah. Uh, that's what they said to me when I was doing my act on stage. What? Who? Who said this? Who the ever-loving fuck walks up to Roseanne and gives her notes on political correct? No, they didn't. Absolute bullshit. I wasn't going through enough shit where no man would let me on any fucking stage. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. No man would let me on any fucking zit. So, so the female bookers would, and that's how they ruin comedy? I don't understand this at all. And the bitches that are supposed to be on my side go, can you not say husband? Can you say lover? Or we can't allow you stage time here. I go, you fascist bitch. You <laughs> fucking just the same. All right, nonsense. I, seriously. Absolute. She's... I guarantee she's relating a secondhand story from somebody else 
like there is no way they said if you use the word husband we're not giving you stage time at this particular place she heard some bullshit story about an all lesbian night at some comedy club and she's like it's a woman's night but it's not really it's a lesbian night but since it's a woman's you know lesbians are women therefore i should be able to perform and 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 then she heard a story from somebody else like they won't even let you use the word husband if you have a husband they just rather, just say lover they won't get it somebody said pro- at best something along those lines they said you know i don't if you say husband they're gonna boo because it's all lesbians like that's it they're not gonna laugh because if you say husband they they can say like it wasn't like we can't give you stage this is just absolute bullshit i'll say what i fucking want to say <laughs> maybe that's maybe the maybe the anger was the reason why it's really kind of antithetical to comedy God, it is it is a blessing and a curse not to have a filter. I, you know how many meetings I've been in with like, like big, co- you know, the networks and stuff, and I'll pitch something, and they'll go like, oh, we're just like looking for something with more like with social justice, and I go, oh, all right, more unfunny TV. I'll just say it. <laughs> I was like, there's already so many good things out. All right, uh, I don't know where the fuck she's pitching shit. Where they go, uh, we're looking for something with a little more social justice. And her response is, oh, a more unfunny stuff. It, it, is, what kind of wiffle ball setup and shithole punchline nonsense is this? They come up and said, look, just don't do anything you like. And I was like, well, I'd like to get the fuck out of here. And I was like, boom. And I left. Like, no, you didn't. None of that happened. And if they did, who the fuck pitches to anybody who literally says, we're looking for something a little more social justice e." It's if social justiceism in our shows. We want something that's a little more socially just just in its general justiceness. Keep doing that. That's working. TV sucks. It Have does. you seen TV? Oh, it's horrible. There wow. is. Have you seen TV? I've seen TV. I've seen. I've yeah. I've seen TV. I've been naked on TV a lot. Thing good i can't watch the shows anymore it's like yeah the shows that's the thing it's the it isn't even the tv the shape of it itself it's the shows you know the shows that are on tv you know that are on now that the shows they have that and the and the social justice shows that are on the shows on on tv I, I, I don't really give a fuck what people do personally with their own lives. I, and it's not even like, I'm trying to be like, I don't care what people do. Be you. I could care if you live or die. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. So I don't care what people do, but like, well then why don't you just, uh, go, yeah, social justice. Fuck. I can do that. Let's make some money. And at, at, like, you can't have this nihilistic hitman attitude and at the same time go, I'm not going to bend to your rules. If it's going to make you millions of dollars and you can go like, these fucking dumbasses, what? I'll give you some social justice bullshit. Like, you can't, you can't give a fuck and not give a fuck at the same time. Jesus Christ. To push, <laughs> to push the shit so far to where it feels unnatural and forced. It's like, it's making for bad TV. It's a sitcom. Sitcoms are unnatural and forced. That's the talent. The talent in doing a sitcom is making an unnatural forced thing feel fluid sitcoms are musicals without the songs that's what the timing is there's nothing natural about it this the volume isn't natural the reaction time isn't natural it's odd to wait for a fucking laugh before you finish your next sentence no one does that we don't need well i mean i have to sometimes in life i mean that's just how i live but Two, uh, two lesbian cops, one black, one white, named the Fosters, who are fostering children, and like, <laughs> um, like, and one of them is trans, and the other one's dating a, like a drag queen. Like, we don't need the episode to be like that. It could be a little bit of everything. Yeah, we could we could put throw it in like a seasoning every once yeah. in a while, right? right. You know? Yeah, we could throw that in like a seasoning, because who doesn't season? That's. The Fosters is actually a show, for one. People deserve to have freaky trans sex if they want to, but, like, let's not oversaturate well, the market. It- yeah, that's true. There is a limited audience for freaky trans sex. I, I will, yeah, probably, you know, especially in broadcast television shows. It's just all about the outraged 
television by the outrage. People oh. says the lady who was just outraged by a note someone gave her that she took as an as a rule. Compensate with if it even happened again. If it even happened opinion they have if you just like were just chill add your opinion and just kind of didn't care we'd all be fine yeah but everybody is like this is the thing and it's only that right yeah that's uh that's the, it's this is the thing and it's only that i've heard that so many times sometimes when i'm pitching uh, a show to the tv um in one of those rooms and they're like they they say like we want this and only this. And I'm like, well, I don't have that. I have this. And they're like, what's that? And I go, it's not this. And they're like, this, this that we want or this that you want. And I'm like, it's just a this or a that, depending on whether, do you want that? Because I can give you that. But if you want this, I can give you this. Well, that is this to you and this is that to me. So I guess we're going to have to meet in the middle. And that's that. <laughs> so stupid. And so I'm like, who cares? It's the lesbian. That's the. So I'm telling you, <laughs> it's nothing. But they don't think nothing's funny. The lesbians don't think nothing's funny. That's the. the, the. Does she have a beef with Paula Poundstone that we're just about to find out? Is that what this is about? Is this some sort of fucking ancient leftover Paula Poundstone got a gig Roseanne was looking for in fucking 1987 and she didn't like that she ended up on a trailer trash uh, sitcom that was super successful and she's still pissed that Paula Poundstone got to be the quirky intellectual in the, in, in the Annie Hall outfit? My sister's a fucking lesbian. Mine too. Is she? <laughs> yeah. And they don't hardly think nothing's funny. <laughs> they don't hardly think nothing's funny. M maybe, I don't know, have you ever been around her when she's laughed? Maybe she's, because I'm going to guess she laughs at something. Maybe she doesn't laugh when you're around, which means that she doesn't think nothing's funny. She just thinks you're unfunny as fuck now. I <laughs> might <laughs> They're Am known right? for not having They're a sense of humor. humor. You're not the first to say that. <gasps> Some oh! of them are my, still my fans, and they come up and they say, thank God for you, Roseanne, because I'm never going to go with the mother kind. You know, <laughs> we understand humor. I'm never going to go with them other kind. And freedom of speech. Yeah. We're not fucking Nazis like them. Yeah. And you look at them, and they are. And by them, she means the other lesbians, because there's apparently a comedy war going on in lesbianic town where uh, half the lesbian, 80%, 95% of lesbians have no sense of humor. And the 5% that do love Roseanne and Roseanne only. Which these days would, I mean, in the old days might mean that you had a sense of humor. Now, mm. Look like what's her name with the pink hair. It looks like a fucking <laughs> Nazi. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, there aren't any pink haired Nazis. I, I mean, I, there's not a single Nazi I can think of that would be appropriate in the background of the song Beauty School Dropout in Greece. It's a reference nobody's gonna fucking get. Wait, wait, wait. With pink hair and a <laughs> pussy hat and my daughter. Yeah, again, also, also not standard Nazi wear. Not gonna see a lot of pussy hats over there. Unless, of course, you're, uh, let's say you remember the Allied Forces back when pussy was a, was a pejorative, not based on the vagina, but on the term pusillanimous, mousy, weak, that kind of thing. Having nothing to do with genitalia, but a shorter version of a pusillanimous rat or something like that. So hence pussy. And that you as an Allied soldier would see a, a Nazi hat with a big spike on top and like, look at that pussy. Ping. You know what I mean? That's a possibility. Uh, the pussy hat thing. Oh, this is the best joke I ever wrote. Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, <clears throat> according to Roseanne, how women ruined comedy, starting with her pussy hat joke. Here it comes. The best joke she ever wrote. Help me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I go, looking back, when y'all were in the street with them pussy hats, Little did <laughs> you crazy. all fucking were transphobic because not every woman has a pussy, pussy. you transphobic bitches, right? Well, hey, okay, first of all, not 
not a great joke. Mo mostly like a snide remark. Also, all snide remarks, not jokes. Uh, secondly, it's not a woman hat, it's a pussy hat. So therefore, if not all women have pussies or not all, you know, or some trans men have them or whatever, you're wearing that piece of genitalia, not, I'd be mean, calling it the woman's march is the joke. How can you wear, you got to throw in the woman's march thing because otherwise without the label woman, the pussy part isn't the issue. Especially if you're not transphobic and you don't care or what have you. Just, look, I, look, I normally wouldn't nitpick a joke, <laughs> but uh, in my defense, A, it's not really a joke. Again, it's a snide remark. And, and B, uh, I, even on a rudimentary level, it, it has to try and work as a joke. This is one of those things like I see in a lot of comics these days. And it's it's these young comedians like Roseanne that do this shit these days where, ah, the, this, is, this crowd's too touchy. I'm too edgy for them. And you're like, no, you just don't have jokes. You're making snide remarks about shit, which are not meant to elicit laughter. They're meant to elicit agreement. If you don't believe me, ask Dennis Miller now versus Dennis Miller in 1990. Yeah. Am I right? It should have been pussy dick hats. You're right. Yes. Yeah. There was nobody. Yeah, that's that's the punchline that would have saved it. Pussy dick hats. Yep. That's great. <clears throat> it's, yep. It's super good. Super. Yep. This, this is great. This is one of the best punch up sessions I've ever seen. I I think honestly, um, if I watch any more of this video, I might start agreeing with the title. Around with a big old dick on their head. No. What would be the term for that? I, I, uh, I know there is one. one. Except me. And I did that video years ago where I actually got one of those rubber dicks. Great, great, yeah. And then what happened? That they wear. <laughs> I filmed that. Yeah. Her, her, her son filmed her in a penis hat, okay. Oh, because my sister's a lesbian, all her friends are lesbians, so a Quite a few of them have appendages. It's no fucking big deal. What so do you mean? Oh, you huh? mean like sex toy appendages? Or are you talking like oh, trans men? It's oh, yeah. no fucking big deal. Half of them are rabbis up there mm -hmm. in Marin County. So you you feel half of the rabbis in Marin County are trans men? I honestly, this is yeah, yeah. Uh, we're all lost. I don't want you to feel alone in this audience. Hello, chat room. Hi, sparklers. I <laughs> like um out of like all the people that are comedy fans lesbians get the most offended yes yes i think that's the generalized opinion of the room the hardest to make laugh unless <laughs> they're drunk but th but when they're drunk they are the best audience what do they become less lesbian when they're drunk or, or maybe drunk audiences are easier laughs than sober audiences always, and a poor workman blames their tools. And that is why I charge them so much. <laughs> I think it's white really? women that are the worst. White I think... It's white women that are the worst. <laughs> Again, okay, first of all, racist. Second of all, you're not a comic. You have no fucking idea. Your mom goes up there and yells at white women in particular, largely as part of her crowd, as she's increasingly gotten less funny over the years because she's more angry than aware. And that's the tipping point. Your awareness has to supersede your anger so that you can use that awareness to take the anger and artistically turn it into comedy but if that if if you're if in this race in this tortoise in the hair race that everybody takes off on if the if, if your awareness gets out front and you're fucking it's racing ahead like the rabbit like the like the hare and it gets ahead and you're like oh fucking hilarious and then the the tortoise of anger eventually overtakes the hare then you're like this bitch is mad she's just yelling at us and shit and if your son's sitting in the audience 
going, I, fuck, I have to film her in a, a, a penis helmet tomorrow. That's how you're going to read the room. White women right now. The Karens? The, the Karens. White women are For the For me, worst. my worst audiences have always been like when I do shows at like Soho houses. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like those shows, like really rich, young rich. elites. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, but, you know, they that's the paying gig. What are you going to do? Ugh, disgusting. They are. They'll horrible. they'll come up to you after a show and be like, um, I really liked your set, but I just have a quick note. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. I are literally had to be women? like, get the fuck. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, get out of my f- fucking face. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, that's not something an elite would do. Also, uh, for the record, uh, I, I let's see, maybe two two times in my life, people have come up to me with like jokes or add-ons, and I, it, it, and there might even be somebody in the chat rooms who witnessed a couple of these times where people come up and they try to add on, like I, uh, I appreciate you and I, I thank you for that, but this is a singular art form, and if I allow that line to be breached, notes or otherwise, I will just go by the laughter of the generalized crowd. That's my rule. I don't need, like, I know there, cause there are other punchlines, and I know there are other ways of taking that. If you think of one, that's the seat of you being a comedian. You should take that idea and go, if I was talking about this topic, I would go there. You should be doing stand-up. Don't give someone else your notes in that moment. And so I will thank them and try to send them on the road towards their own comedy, if they, if, you know, if they think it's worthwhile, without ever listening to it, because I don't want to hear it, because it's my show, and I'm trying to build on something, and... You open that up and everybody's throwing notes your way. But the idea that you just go, get the fuck out of my face. And you just told us that you were in, you're surrounded by Soho elites. And then you literally do like the Soho elite mime. Get the fuck away from me. I don't need your fucking notes. Jesus. What are you talking about? What you're are the insane. notes like? Is it- uh, you suck and you're boring and you're, you seem angry and you don't really have any punchlines and these stories drone on and you think snide remarks are punchlines or or setups and they really aren't and you you're just kind of whining and there's really no timing and uh i'm just spitballing this is just what i'm gathering from the room also uh i i i don't need to do the whole thing in the